Welcome to part 7 of the Honda XL250 restoration. There's no silent stuff in here, there's no MG stuff in here, although I do have the MG's engine there, which I've got to start on fairly soon, just purely cosmetics. But this one, we look at the wiring. I've spent about 15, 20 minutes or so, maybe. Um, I don't know, 15 minutes or so on wiring, and it can get a little bit dry, but it did trip me up with one or two little things, so you can always fast forward through that and get to the parts now. I'm uh, reassembling the bike. But in that, in this video, I don't do any reassembly, I don't think. But anyway, look, have a look, see what you reckon, and I hope you enjoy. Right, fuel tank. Now, this one, believe it or not, is pretty good. I've got lots of bits of, looks like surface rust there. There's no point in sanding that out and painting over it, because underneath there, you'll probably find all around here, there's surface rust there. So all that paint needs to come off. A few scratches where it's got underneath in this area here. Small dent there. Uh, otherwise it looks pretty good. There's something there, there's a dent there too. Uh, around the other side, more of the same. Surface rust underneath. Um, but overall in pretty good nick. Now, this has got fuel in it. It's actually got quite a lot of fuel in it, which is good and bad. Normally, if you're not going to ride a bike, you're going to leave it for any length of time, you drain it. But this still smells of fuel when you lift the lid off. There's still considerable, considerable amount of petrol there. And um, I want to get rid of it all because when I come to using heat guns to get rid of these sort of decals and these ones, I don't want any risk of fire and uh, you know, I just want it to be nice and neutral inside before I do any work on it now. The fact it's got fuel is not so bad because I know it doesn't leak. Petcock's off so we can test that into a container and drain the fuel into something I can use in the mower. It's not fresh fuel, but it's going to be fine in the lawn mower. So looking at this, if I open the petcock, it a good flow. That works well. But for the rest of it, we can just basically well, take the fuel out and spill it all over the floor. Good thing about this, it'll evaporate quite quickly. But I want to stick this out in the sun to um, get rid of all vapors and smells and all that sort of stuff. How full are we? We're getting awfully full in there. Found a bit of crap in there, but she's right. Good. We all just fit it in a five litre can. Right, we've got some um, cold water, warm would be better. Bit of morning fresh. I've had this in here for about 10 years, uh, even to the point where I've cleaned the bottle a few times. This is great for colour sanding, paint and all that sort of stuff, but just a little bit in there, not too much, and of course a toothbrush. And it's just an exercise in basically cleaning up wiring. But we want to get it to the point where it's going to look alright. Which, that's average. <laughs> but, um... You know, if we're going to reuse it, we want it to look sort of semi all right. The problem with this sort of thing, though, is you probably find the mud it's got up in there. If it's not immaculate, it doesn't matter. It's original. I don't want to completely rewire because I don't think it's necessary. Given that these conductors look to be in rather lovely condition. Block connectors like this are particularly good. That's just mud. And, of course, that just comes straight off, which is what we want. Um... And look, you're going to get these wet. There's not much you can do about it. It's just a matter of making sure that they're dried out and they've got, they've been maintained properly. So they're dried out properly and all looking good afterwards. So compressed air, a bit of um, electrical spray. And also, you know, left on the ducted heating register in the house, that sort of thing. So. But they will come up brilliantly and they're not going to corrode, they're plated. So although this loom looked pretty dreadful, it's actually really good. I'm well happy with it. 
and you know it's straight away a lot better off we just got to make sure it's dried properly before we tape anything and we don't want any sort of anything like that forming any corrosion forming i did this one here too the red one and that was brown when i pulled it out so we just want to make sure it's all it's all looking pretty good maybe use a smaller brush in there so onward and forward as they say i've literally um hosed that loom off just blown it out and just sitting there to dry people tell me i get a lot of comments you know you can stick a lot of this stuff in the dishwasher no one said wiring looms in the dishwasher but a lot of people say you know bits and pieces like this you know i'm married to an extremely tolerant lady who's wonderful and i just don't want to do that because um she doesn't complain about anything i do but i reckon she would if i started bringing it inside and look it's not hard to do it this way i'm just washing off the boots this is the rear one that goes down to the tail lights and the indicator lights come out the two rear indicator lights come out of that that of course is the front so this stuff looks to be washing quite well right so if you're wearing headphones turn the uh, turn the volume down i had a guy complain about that because this has a way of deafening people right so we've cleaned our loom everything looks lovely in terms of the terminal qualities and the cleanliness and all that sort of stuff it still looks a little bit grotty in areas they're all good um and up behind the headlight is all fine they look opaque but the terminals inside are nice and clean and that's the main thing now we of course can use our spray um which is like a solventy smelling leaves a sort of an oily residue but it's it's a proper contact spray and um probably best to do this before we fit everything but the only thing that I'm a bit reserved about is the um, the ones at the rear under the rear guard. I'm not sure I like them. So I'm just going around doing this just to clean a bit more, maybe displace any moisture. And I want to do something else quickly, or at least talk about it. These ones down here, though, look pretty grotty, but. They do look fairly good inside. Where's my little flashlight? They're not bad inside though. I think it would be a pity to cut them up. But if there's any doubt with continuity when we put it together, I'll cut them out. Well, I never throw things out until I've finished a job. I always say this. And of course, we've got this um, thing here, which is a kill switch and light socket of course there's the kill switch and light unit there which somebody's put all these bullet terminals on of course on the junker bug had this piece of wire that was just cut off and sort of severed and looks horrible but look at that it's got the right plug there which all the codes all the colors match up so i can sort of put that on cut this up here somewhere and sold it into that so that way we use the right switches and all of the switches are in good condition the only bad ones are on the other loom like that sort of thing which we're not going to use so i've just got this connector which i salvaged off an old piece of loom that was torn up and i've just got some heat shrink on it and i'm sort of soldering it into the old um or soldering it into the combination switch just so that we can plug up the right kit and um stick some heat shrink on and a bit of Hopefully this switch's integrity is good. But I just want to splice the wires together. I wanted to do it with the proper connector, so if I do need a switch, I don't want a cheap overseas knockoff. I want a good Honda original kit one. I'll have it come with the right plug anyhow. So that's all good. Uh, right, so we've got to check some wiring out. So we've got our combination switches on. We've got our ignition switch on. There's the other combi there. We haven't put the brake light, the rear one on. I don't know if that works. It's got a broken terminal, which we can solder up that. Solder that later, so I'm not worried about that. We've got that damaged wire in there, which has been soldered before, but yeah, big deal. 
So this is a six volt system. We're going to pump 12 volts through it, but we haven't got any ancillaries on. So we haven't got the flasher can on. We haven't got the reg or rectifier, any of that stuff. The electronic stuff's off. So all it is is switches and wires. Um, and we can do that with 12 volts. Now, the reason for that is I've got a, a power supply for my box hill TAFE days, and that only goes to one amp. And of course, I'm going to need at least five. So basically, the only two tools we're going to need are a test light um, to see where power comes out and a multimeter set to continuity. If we have trouble with wiring, we can see if we've got the right one and that sort of thing. So they're the only two tools we need um, at the moment to test the integrity of this wiring. So our feed wires, battery, well, not a bad idea also when you do this sort of work, turn the ignition on, just on the off chance. There shouldn't be any load, any sparks, nothing like that. So we can put that there. So checking uh, indicator circuits and that sort of thing is pretty easy. The first thing you would do is use a continuity tester. And you can ascertain what each. There's three going onto the flasher. That will be an earth. So where's an earth cable? Oh, here. That's earth. The black's power. So you can just check that by still, and it'll be constant power. So that's that. So we know the grey one goes to the switch and we can just go into one of the indicator wires up here, that's the left one, and just hit the switch and left is that way, right is light blue, which is this one here. And what that does, hang on, I haven't got a good contact, hang on, so right, is there. So we know the light works. And you can also stick power in it and check it that way. Of course, it's pretty easy to do that. We can bridge the black with the gray, which bypasses the flasher can. We keep away from the earth. These are the two you'd use on a two pin flasher can. The earth's necessary for a three pin or an electronic one. And our power feed in is there, which is which? That's that one there. Hang on a second, I'll just put those devices there. That's our power feed in. And our negative is this little guy here. And we can just put a test light in. That's orange, so it's left and we can just do that. So, it's just a matter of going through checking circuits like that. The, all this looks pretty good. The thing that I'm a little bit dubious about <coughs> is the um, brake switch. Oh, it works. Hang on. I tested it before and it didn't. I was gonna say it's probably better to get a new brake light switch for the front, for the back, sorry. The front one should be a bit better. Horn, again, uh, which is which? I think it's that one. Where's the horn button? Dun, 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 dun. There we go, we've got a horn. So it's all looking really good. And what that does, it also, it doesn't check these things under load, but it does check that they're working. So before we put the switches together, I'll put contact spray in there, make sure they all look good, and we can put them back together. Right. I downloaded a um, wiring diagram which is useless, it's the wrong bike. And so I've chucked it out. And I've got a problem with the headlights. Now we have red going into the switch here. That is your power in. So there, which is there. And black coming out is your power out. And that goes around all your ancillaries. It goes to your flasher. It goes to your uh, brake light switch. All of these come out. It even goes up to your instrument light. Doodles. Connector. And so we've got four of them along here. There's a black and white which goes to the coil that's different. And um, all of these go along. Now we're not getting a feed into... Well, that one goes there. We're not getting a feed into the... Into the bloody headlight. Where does that go? Oh, it goes to the switch. That's the main one there. 
Well, I found myself getting caught. I've uh, run around this thing with a multimeter and a test line. I've checked continuity, I've hooked some power up to it and sussed 80 to 90% of it without any trouble at all. Did it in about 10 minutes. Of course, what I'm referring to, power in, um, checked indicator circuits, all this sort of stuff, everything's fine. Everything's kosher, the kill switch, all those switches work. I pulled them apart. Now, I, pulled, I had to pull them apart anyway to clean them, but I pulled them apart because I thought there was something wrong because I couldn't get any power to the headlight. And what I didn't know is there's actually a few different independent circuits in here, especially the headlight, which is powered through a white wire. Now, that white wire goes straight to the alternator, so the headlight uh, looks to be powered by AC. Um, now the headlight and high beam indicator are like that. They're actually powered independently of the rest of the loom. There's a few funny things going on with it. These ones, of course, I think that does go down to the generator. I'm yet to figure that out. These do, neutral switch, and that's also the neutral indicator light, sorry, is the green one. The white one is the power feed for the headlight. Now that threw me. That absolutely threw me for a little bit. I had to really think about it. I downloaded a circuit diagram which was absolute rubbish. It didn't tell me anything I wanted to know. It didn't make any sense. So, it's a simple loom, but I didn't know there were two power feeds on it. I didn't know there was an AC and a DC one. But look, we've got it all sussed at the moment. Um, all the switches are working. The ignition switch is working. All the circuits are working. There's only one um, question, and it's that pink one. I just need to get it back in and have a look at it. I'm not going to tape it yet. I'll wait till I've started assembling the bike. Uh, of course, then I can sort of um, rough it in, so to speak, and start taping it off just so it's nice and tidy. I can sort of custom tape it to the, to the frame so that it's really, really neat. Um, and we haven't got sort of any gathering conductors or anything like that. And of course, we'll double wrap this. We will use a proper plastic loom tape and then we'll put the fabric over the top. Um, and that can be removed later if David wants to, but he was sort of keen on it and I reckon it looks pretty cool too. So that's it for the wiring. I didn't want to drag it on too long because it does become very dry and a little bit boring. Um, but I can hang this up with the 751. I haven't looked at the 751 yet, but I know this one's cool. The switches are cool. They just need to be sort of tarted up to look a bit better. But uh, there you have it. There you have it. A very simple loom. It threw me a bit because I wasn't aware of that AC feed, but... Um, Probably because I did 99% of it without using a wiring diagram. Um, and once I gave up and sort of the, just didn't add up, I went online had a bit of a look around. And I've used um, bits of XL 250 and 350 diagrams to try and figure out how it all goes. But uh, no, it's all good. It's all good now. So we can put this one to bed and start working on something else. So it's bling time. Of course, we've got two lots of plating back. We've got... This isn't moving very fluidly. The gold stuff over here, carburetor parts and brake parts and cush drive parts, sprocket mounts, everything like that, that's all there. And we've got the silver here. Right, so we're just going to sort through this, which is going to be a bit of a mess. Cable stays, a little bit of crank coast bolt, that's the hub, the spoke mount on the hub. Um, my 750 rear brake lever. So it's a matter of going through all this. Clutch actuator. Um, pillion passengers. These little guys that hold the exhaust collets in for the 250. Sun plugs. Steering head nut. Crankcase. So, how to go through. I always do this and it's boring to watch. Because <laughs> I remember it's a cable stay from the front. Oh, I've just dropped one. Um, and I'll bag what I need to. Um, these are all engine ones. I like doing this because they're the proper kit. That'll be the kickstand. More of these. I just sort of chucked in. I've got two of those. One's gold and one's silver. I don't know how to do that. But um, break. That's pretty easy. So it is. it looks confusing, but it's actually surprisingly straightforward. There you have pillion passengers with a speed nut that's stuck over there. The, uh, oops, that goes that way. All your passengers that sit on the back and panic when you hit the throttle as you choke cable bracket. And another one, actually, that's... Yeah, it's another one. There's two of them. 
There's a space for the back wheel, more of that. So anyway, I'm just going to keep going. I don't know what that is. That's for the gators, the top gator clamp. Kickstarter. So you can put the Kickstarter assembly back together as a gear shift. There's two gear shifts, and I'm not happy with either of them. So I'm just going to battle through this stuff and see if we can make sense of it all. Brake actuator, lever, decompression. Um, steering head, most the steering head stuff's there. And um, figure it out. So there's another brake spacer, wheel spacer. That's the other gear shift. I don't like either of those, I think they both suck. Crankcase, crankcase, that's another wheel spacer. So I'm going to keep going with this, rather than you watching it, which is going to be incredibly boring. I'm just going to go ahead and try and sift through this and figure out what they all do. These are important. These are the um, engine casing bolts. And they're the original Honda ones. They're sort of a rounded, hexed, shouldered head on them. And there should be a mass of those in here. Bunches of them. And there was, wasn't enough on each bike to sort of, there they all are there, to um, have a complete set. But on both bikes together, I have got a complete set. So I can go through all this and sort all that out too. Oh, my old favourite. I took this out for a drive yesterday. I absolutely love this car. Look at how the um, the roof's really retained its sheen. I'm very happy with how the roof... This was the one that had 74 um, hailstone dents. And I got some of them out and I filled some of it. But it's really... It's beautiful. I do have to repaint the boot lid though. We've got lumps in it. Um, and it's not rust. The boot... I. It's a mess. I've got to redo that. Um, it's poor 15 over some surface rust. I made a stupid mistake. But the roof and everything else turned out fine. So this bike will be painted in the same stuff this is, which is acrylic. And some, if you use too much product, it will dull off. And it happened with the XD. There was far too much product on there. And consequently it dulled off. But you can sort of rub it back a bit with a bit of 2000 maybe. Um, I just tried a small area and buff it out again. It'll come out well. It's because it released too much solvent. There's a divot there. There's an imperfection there. But that's what we're going to paint the bike in. Although some parts are duller. If you look here, can you see that? I need to rebuff some parts. I'll, buff, I'll rebuff the whole thing. There's scratches in it. I'm not happy with that. But the rest of it I am. It's sort of standing up very, very well. It's only a couple of years. But. There's a stuff up in here somewhere too, I can't see it there. Yeah, it's a couple of buggers up there. I don't know if you can see that, it's all pitted. So some of it's not very good. But I got really sick of bodywork. I spent a lot of time on the roof and, uh, and so forth. But I really, I'm not happy with the tops of the guards. And I'm, the boot lid I am going to strip back and redo. But there's a, a few years on, a couple of years on since I finished this. I've only got, how many miles have I got on it? Better all miles. I just don't drive it enough. It's got 535 plus, uh, was it 55? So it's 540, so 590 miles. Almost 600 miles, not much. Right, so I'm just going through a few bits and pieces. Some of the stuff that was in here was 750. Um, of course, that's my brake actuator lever for the back. And there's a, um, a special, I think Americans call these cotter pins. We call them the clever skin. It's got a flat edge on it, so I'm just going to pop that in. And see, it sits there like that. I'm not sure if I've got that in frame as I have. And I'll just pop a split pin in just to hold it there for now. It'll just it'll separate that a bit. That way the pin can't come out. And I can put that away for the, the Honda. A lot of people tend to, and I've, I've heard this quite a lot, where people have said, thanks very much for your videos. They inspire me to continue with my own project. And some of the reason for that is um, they tend to lose their way a little bit. Cars are probably easier to lose your way with motorbikes or than motorbikes. Uh, this, of course, is just a sub-assembly I've, I've put together. It's the uh, footrest for one of the sides, of course, it's got a nice newly plated clever spin and spring. All of the electric plating on this was heat treated to um, give it some longevity. And it's just a matter of figuring out, and sometimes you have to do it against the frame. Uh, which way is that going? That goes like that. And 
just sifting through bits and pieces. Now I can't remember because this was away for a while. I cannot remember. Let's let's hide. How some of it went. It's actually <laughs> reasonably difficult to sort of recall. But um, I might just put a spot of grease on there, just a spot that I don't want much. The plastic will probably help lubricate it. Um, whoops. But I just don't want it to chafe. Right, so I'm just going to flick that away because I've got it upside down. There we go. That's better. I actually couldn't understand why it didn't look right, and it's because these are easy. To, it's very easy to get confused with this stuff. I'll put a flat washer on and a new split pin. These ones I'm dubious about. I'm not so sure they're big enough. In fact, I know they're not. So this will be a temporary gig, and we can change that over. But at the end of the day, if we have some kit to stick on a shelf to represent it finished, that's a good thing. So. We can put these together. Uh, the Kickstarter is another one. Of course, I had the bolt plated as well as, or the screw, as well as the receptacle that goes onto the crankcase. Oh, it's got the bolt in there somewhere for that, and that will slip in there uh, somehow, like that. It folds out and then folds in. Of course, we've got to put in this spring and ball. So I'll clean that up now and put it in. There's the battery box finished. I think I showed that in the last video. It goes that way. And there's a little bolt that holds it. I've just got to put in the um, rubber pads. Anyway, as I said, we've done these now with the right fitting hardware. She looks brand new. That's the, ch that's the sort of look we're chasing with this bike. So I can put those away and forget about them for now. Um, the other thing is the chain tension. I couldn't remember how this went back together. Of course, here it is here with the block out of the acetyl that we made. Of course, that's got a brass sleeve in it, which needs to lubricate. So we will stick a little bit of slipper in there. We don't want too much grease does away or does have a way of um, attracting dirt and making it stick to it. But um, what do you do? We just avoid using too much. Stick that in there and that's good to go. So I'm going to wipe my fingers. Now, the other thing I wanted to mention was um, this thing here, the spring for the tensioner, which had a way of lying. I'm not sure if that's in frame. Can you see where I'm going over here? No, you can't. There you are there. Right, so the frame, the tensioner sits, sorry, in here, like that. And of course, there's a spring that runs up against the plastic, the powder coating, and I want to avoid that getting damaged. So I'm just going to slip some heat, heat shrink over it, get a cigarette lighter, and I'll just arc him up, make it sit over there. Now, this isn't going to be super duper strong, but it will offer it some protection. I've got a bigger bit of heat shrink, just a moment. Here we go, it's a bit longer, but we can stick it over. And look, you know, as I said, this isn't the be all and end all, but it will offer it a little bit of extra protection. So load him up like that, stuck down nice and hard. Right, so this sits, and I had trouble remembering how this all went. It sits, I think, a bit like that. Now, before we do that, we should, if it's been powder coated like it all has, I'm just going to move that stuff so I don't scratch anything, run a tap through there. That's an 8 by one25 pitch thread. <laughs> now, we've run an 8 by one25 tap through there, so we know this is going to go in well, and that should go like that in there. We can just stick our bolt somehow in. I'm fighting a little bit now. There we go. There, and it should all screw up, which is cool. I'm just going to get my extension. We're good to go. And there we go. That's the first bit of our bike assembled, which is cool. I've got these um, bits and pieces here. I'm just going to stick in that hole. I'm going to pop a little bit of grease in there, followed by a spring. And there's a ball bearing that sits on top, which gives the Kickstarter some detent. So we'll just do that. Let's sort of hold it in. A little bit of slip around here. And oh, I need a rag. Hang on a minute. Anyway, so what we've got to do is we've got to feed this into here. And it will rest, it'll rest in that hole there. So this is pushing me in. 
get it. That's nice and positive, cool. And then that will go in and trap the whole thing. And then I've just got to sift through that box of um, plated bits and pieces. And um, maybe a bit of Loctite on there probably wouldn't have been a bad idea. Um, I'm always a bit dubious about losing Loctite or using Loctite on a Phillips head because you can never ever get things off. But that looks mint. So it'll sit on like that, flick out, start him up and then go back again. That's much better. If we compare that to the old one here, that's off the donor bike. And it's all sloppy and floppy and horrible. So you can see a heck of a difference, can't you? Oops. <laughs> cool. So I'm just trying to get this nipple in. Um, just been sort of cleaning up with a tap. You've just got to make sure you get all the muck out. I've got a magnet stuck to the side of a small screwdriver. That'll magnetise it a bit and just mean you can get any of that sort of swarf out. Here we go. Can I get it in? A bit more. So there we go, a few bits and pieces we can stick back on the bike. Um, I'm not sure I've got that the right way, but it's pretty easy to change around um, if I have got it wrong. So anyway, look, before we put any of this on, First thing we've got to do is hit the bike with these. These things here can go on for now just to keep them off the bench. Um, but of course they'll have to come off again when we put the engine in. These are the steering bushes, steering bearings I should say. Of course we've got two seals, two tapered roller bearings. This is all balls, American firm. Two tapered bearings, two spacers, some instructions. Now, what they're telling us to do is we've got to measure the thickness of the old bearings before we put this in. This is the bottom one. When we put the bottom one on, we just gotta make sure they're the right thickness because if they're wrong, it can be a hassle. The top one's easy because you can just take this off or put it on according to the um, according to the height you want it, if you know what I mean. But the bottom is fairly critical because it does have to be pressed. So that's the first thing next video, which won't be too long. Um, a few days, I reckon I'll have that on and um, take this paper off and grease it up and put it in and make it all look pretty. So anyway, Hope you've enjoyed this. Sorry it's been a little while before I bought it out. Take care of yourselves and uh, drive safely. See you later.